My name is Catherine Taracha. I work for Kenya Agricultural and Livestock Research Organization, where I am the Director of Biotechnology Center. This is a center charged with carrying out research using biotechnology tools for increased food security in the country. I'm going to talk about the new cassava varieties we have and how they contribute to food security and they can contribute to the farmer's income. Now, cassava in Kenya is a very important food security crop and a source of um, income, especially in the marginal and drought prone areas, which cover about 75% of Kenya. It is the second most important food crop in, in some parts of Kenya. Take for example, Busia County, uh, which was able to produce over 223,000 tons, valued at 2.5 million in 2018. And on average, the whole country produces about 970 tons annually. Now, why cassava? Cassava is a very important crop because it's widely consumed um, both in rural and urban Kenyan areas. It provides the complete daily energy food requirements. Um, in some areas, like in coastal areas, the cassava leaves are, rich, are a rich source of protein and it can be grown in most areas in, Ke in Kenya. But the most common areas of the three regions that you can find cassava is in the Western region where 60% uh, of our cassava comes from. Um, the coastal region plant about 30% of the cassava and then Eastern and Central contribute towards 10% of the cassava that is produced in Kenya. Now, cassava also is a potential industrial crop. And there are so many um, products that you can get from cassava. Um, if you look on your extreme left, you will see you can also make composite flour where you can mix it with other flours like uh, maize and, um, and, and, and um, wheat and make a composite flour. In fact, uh, the Ministry of Agriculture have come up with a policy. It's called the blending policy where they hope to have um, all our maize and, and wheat and other products mixed with about 30% of cassava. And this is to reduce the pressure on maize. As you know, maize is the main crop, food crop in our Kenya, in our country. And there are so many challenges. Um, we know about climate change. Um, we have uh, the unexpected weather. And then we also have um, emergent uh, diseases and pests that have come up. Uh, in 2018, and in 2018, we got the fall armyworm, which is very, very destructive and um, can destroy a lot of our maize. And also we do have maize lethal necrosis virus, which has also been a major constraint in maize production. Um, cassava, from cassava, we can get biodegradable bags. Um, the bag you see in uh, blue written, I'm not plastic, is a bag that is being produced in Uganda. In Kenya, we have the cassava bag that you can see is all biodegradable. In Uganda, they make a beer, gule. It is actually made from cassava. And um, cassava can also produce industrial starch that is, can be used in um, textile manufacturing. And as you can see at the bottom, you can also make uh, ethanol. Zambia right now, they have taken advantage of that and they make ethanol from which they are making hand sanitizers, especially now during the epidemic. Cassava can also be used to make animal feed. And again, it will remove the pressure from the maize, which is normally used for animal feed. So cassava can be blended with other things, other cereals and make animal feed. So cassava has the potential to spur manufacturing, create employment and contrib contribute to the to the economy. Um, I talked about a company that's making products from cassava. It is called no Novamont Nova Kenya Limited, and it may manufactures eco-friendly products. It manufactures uh, protective, uh, personal protective equipment, that is masks and overalls that can be used during this epidemic of um, COVID. It also um, can produce from industrial grade cassava, starch um, and bio cassava bags, which I'd already talked to, seedling bags that is used in the agro industry. 
There are challenges to cassava production. These are diseases and insect pests. And some of the diseases are cassava mosaic disease, cassava brown streak disease, cassava bacterial blight. And for insects, we have mealybugs, mites, and white flies. And also, um, adding to the challenges in the production is the nutritional quality. Cassava is potentially um, uh, a carbohydrate and starch and very little protein. It also lacks essential micronutrients and vitamin E. Cassava, once it is harvested, has a very short storage time. So the post-harvest physiology de deterioration is very, very important. So once you have harvested your, your cassava, you either have to consume it or then you process it into flour. Cassava has a high cyanogenic potential. Um, that's another challenge to the production. And it also has a lengthy growing cycle, which results in slow breeding. The farmer and, uh, and consumers also view cassava as a poor man's crop. So this is also another challenge, cassava production. There are two major diseases that challenge cassava production. On the extreme left, you can see cassava mosaic disease, where you get crinkling of the leaves. And then in the middle, you find cassava brown streak disease, disease, where you get streaks of yellow and um, not on the roots. And when you cut the roots, you get a brown coloration inside. Now, these two um, diseases occur together, and they're transmitted by white flies, which you see on the top right-hand side, and by farmers sharing um, cuttings. Farmers new, normally um, plant cassava using cuttings. So when these cuttings have these diseases, you find that they are sharing diseased material. Now for cassava mosaic disease, um, this disease has been managed through traditional breeding. But for cassava brown streak disease, there's no nonsense, there's no source of resistance, natural source of resistance for this disease. So the cost, the cost of cassava brown streak disease, um, it has serious implication for the smallholder cassava farmers in rural communities and growing industries that are dependent on cassava as raw material. You can get a yield losses of susceptible cultivars of up to 70%, which is valued at 7.5 billion Kenya shillings in eight East and Central African countries. Um, this just shows the disease symptoms. Um, on your left, you have the malformed roots. It's sometimes even called rosary. When you get these kind of roots, the people say that it looks like a rosary. And when you cut them, you get the brown rotting and the brown coloration in the storage roots. Now, let me introduce you to the Vica Plus project. Um, this is the project that's been carrying out the work um, to develop um, 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 cassava that's resistant to um, cassava brown streak and cassava mosaic disease. So the goal has been to enhance livelihoods of smallholder farmers by delivering cassava varieties that enhance that are enhanced for resistance to virus diseases. So um, the virus uh, 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 resistant cassava uh, will, will, be pharma will have the farmer preferred qualities, will be resistant to two diseases, the cassava mosaic disease and the cassava brown streak disease. There will be no special farming practices needed. The farmer will just continue uh, planting his cassava using the usual agronomic practices. And it will be distributed uh, through existing national seed delivery systems and can be further de uh, developed by breeders. So um, the virus, uh, the cassava virus uh, project team is a multidisciplinary team uh, from seven institutions from four countries. And uh, it comprises of virologists, plant physiologists, breeders, biotechnologists, molecular biologists, agronomists, regulatory scientists, communication, and management. And this just shows the different institutions that, uh, um, uh, that are on the project. We have, of course, CALRO. We have uh, the National Agricultural Research Organization of Uganda. We have the National um, Crop Research Institute in Umudike in, uh, uh, in Nigeria. Um, we have uh, ISA. 
uh, which is uh, basically um, involved in the uh, communication and Cy Ford also involved in the communication and Donald Dan Danford Plant Center in the US, which has been very instrumental in, this, in development of this cassava and of course IITA. So there has been a journey for the Vica Plus project and this journey started in 2008 with trade discovery. Um, that was where uh, there was the product concept and uh, gene discovery and the proof of con con concept. And this has moved on to product development where there have been various uh, field evaluations and variety development. And in 2020, there was a submission for application to the National Biosafety Authority. And uh, upon uh, approval, there will be um, multi-locational field trials and national performance trials. And eventually there will be delivery of the cassava to the farmers. So modern type biotechnology has been used to produce virus resistant crops. And what normally happens is a part of the DNA of the virus is integrated into the plant genome. And the plant defenses are then activated to recognize uh, the, 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 the part of the DNA that's been integrated in the plant genome. And to, it is activated to recognize, target, and degrade the virus pathogen. And this has been, this uh, technology has been commonly used to produce virus resistant crops all the way from the 1990s. And there are various crops that are already um, using this technology. For, exact, for example, papaya, plum, beans and squash, and they have been approved for commercialization in other parts of the country, of the, of the world. Um, so this just shows the, uh, how we produce the cassava. And this is a multi-step laboratory uh, progress where you start off with a leaf explant, as you can see uh, on the extreme left, and it goes through uh, laboratory processes until you come up with what we call a transgenic plant. This transgenic plants then go through molecular screening, again in the laboratory, and then the various selected lines are then advanced for virus and performance testing in the greenhouse. Um, this just shows um, what happened uh, in the development of a cassava brown streak resistant cassava. The local scientists, have been able to develop a cassava brown streak resistant trait that protects cassava against cassava brown streak disease using a natural plant defense mechanism. So you can see it all starts in the laboratory, it moves to the greenhouse and then to field testing. Now, from the laboratory, um, the cassava brown resistance is then evaluated um, for performance in the greenhouse. Here in the greenhouse, uh, we find that we do take uh, a resistant plant and then we bind it with, uh, it is infected using a cassava uh, brown streak infected bud. So the bud actually has the virus and you, by grafting, you're grafted onto your resistant test plant. And you can see the, the, uh, the, 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 the difference that there is. In the cassava, which do not, does not have the resistance, you get the, blood, uh, the brown coloration. But with the cassava that has, does have the resistance to the virus, you have no, color, uh, uh, no brown coloration, and that means the cassava does not have the disease. Now, there were 25 improved cassava lines that were then uh, further tested in what we called confined field trials. We call them confined field trials because this is a regulatory research. They had to be carried out in confined trials so that the experimental material does not leave the site. And such confined field trials normally has to have um, a security 24 hours. And um, the personnel working in there have to have special training so that none of the research material actually leaves the site. And this just shows uh, the, the improved lines 4.5 4 months after planting. And the best lines, again, can be seen on the extreme bottom right, where the clean um, uh, sliced tubers do not have any coloration, but the ones which were the control materials, which do not have any resistance, have the black 
uh, the, the brown rotting coloration of the leaves. And these trials were actually set up in areas where there's high white fly disease, uh, white fly um, population, therefore high disease incidence. Um, and the best lines were there, and these um, were planted, were, were planted both in Kenya and Uganda. Uh, you remember one of our partners is, is a, a, a research institute from Uganda, and the best lines were then uh, selected for what we call regulatory uh, field trials, both in Kenya and Uganda. Uh, the regulatory field trials in Kenya were in Kandara, and in Uganda they were set up in Serere. So this just shows um, the, the trials of the, um, uh, of the cassava, a close up on the extreme right, you can see the cassava that do not, these are wild type, that means they do not have the resistance, but the cassava where we have developed the resistance, you can see the materials are all clean and there's no brown coloration. So in summary, we found that the, um, disease resistance actually um, increased the usable storage root, root yield 20 times. That means it was more than 95% of roots lost to brown streak disease that did not have the resistance, but more than 98% 98, 98 of the roots that had the resistance, the improved cassava were disease free. Now from that, we were able to come up with the improved line, which we called event 4046, and we advanced this for safety evaluation and put it in our breeding programs. Um, this just shows that um, uh, the, 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 uh, we were able to prove that the cassava brown stick resistant cassava sustained resistance across multiple generations. That means we were able to plant it over several generations. And of course, they maintained the sustained resistance over, uh, over multiple generations and in different locations, because we were able to plant in um, in uh, um, in Uganda as well as in um, Kenya, and in Uganda we were able to plant these in uh, two sites in Namulonge and Serere, and in Kenya we were able to plant in two sites in Mutwapa and Alupe. So there is sustained. Uh, resistance across multiple generations and in different locations. So um, from our research, we found out that this uh, cassava brown streak uh, resistant cassava is actually very safe. And this was based on uh, international food, feed and environmental safety guidelines. We were able to take the leaves and the roots of our improved cassava that's resistant cassava brown streak to a laboratory in the US for um, safety evaluation. And we found that um, the, the cassava just remains the same as the conventional cassava that has not been improved. So the cassava plant characteristics, also we looked at the agronomic characteristics of the improved cassava that is resistant cassava brown streak as well as the cassava, the conventional cassava, and we found the plant char characteristics remained the same. Uh, the nutritional composition was not altered, both in the cassava that had the brown streak resistant had the same nutritional composition as conventional cassava. And of course, there's no negative effects on the environment. So this cassava will be beneficial to breeders, farmers, processors, and consumers because it is a source of cassava brown streak resistance for breeders. There will be, available, uh, there will be availability of good quality planting materials, both for the, for the breeders and the farmers. There'll be increased cassava production from reducing losses to cassava brown streak disease. And there'll be increased income when there's increased productivity and therefore the livelihoods of the farmers will be improved. Now, uh, the Virus Resistant Plus uh, project went through a regulatory phase. Regulatory field trials were performed in Kenya and Uganda. And these were for two seasons. As you know, the cassava, one season of cassava is about between nine to 12 months. So we are talking about two years. And the data was collected for food and feed safety and for environmental safety. Um, Caldwell submitted an application to the National uh, Biosafety Authority for environmental release 
and placing on the market of cassava that's resistant cassava brown streak disease. And this happened on 9th March in 2020. And that just um, shows you, we actually developed a, a dosia that you can see on the extreme right. Um, uh, the, the National Biosafety Authority, which regulates us, put out a notice for public participation. And this was in the Kenya Gazette and in two uh, widely new, read newspapers. Uh, and this was for public participation to get the public's opinion on this cassava that's resistant to cassava brown streak disease. Uh, disease. Um, the public participation was held on 10th June, 2020. And this was via Zoom and Facebook Live, and this was because of COVID. And this was the first time that uh, the public participation was held uh, virtually. And we actually got 1,192 participants. And the total comments that came from the public were 3,342. Now, there was a need to develop cassava that is uh, both resistant to cassava mosaic disease and cassava brown streak disease. Um, if you can see on the right hand side, we, that is a cassava that is resistant to cassava mosaic disease. And you can get this cassava in the farmer uh, preferred varieties. And the cassava that's not resistant is the one you see on the extreme right. You can see the crinkling, of the, of, the, of, of the leaves, and the plant really looks quite um, uh, pathetic when it's diseased. Now, uh, we were able to get both um, resistance uh, of the cassava mosaic disease and cassava uh, brown streak resistance in, uh, one cas in our cassava by doing conventional crossbreeding. That means we took our uh, improved cassava with the uh, resistant cassava brown streak disease, you can see on the extreme right, and we crossed it with uh, farmer preferred varieties that have latent cassava mosaic disease resistance. We did this crosses several times. We were able to get seeds. These seeds were then germinated and we got seedlings. And uh, we threw, took them through uh, various evaluation to ascertain that both the cassava mosaic, uh, mosaic disease resistance and cassava brown stick resistance were in, our, were in our plant. As you can see, these are the seeds uh, here in the middle. You can see the seeds we got from uh, the crosses that we carried out um, and the seeds at the bottom. And then on the top right hand side, you have the seedlings that have been germinated. In, um, in the greenhouse. So these progenies were then uh, evaluated for trait selection. Again, uh, these were, uh, the progenies were evaluated in two sites in uh, Mutwapa, uh, Calro Mutwapa in Kenya and Calro Alupe in Kenya. And they were also evaluated in Uganda at uh, Serere and Namulonge. Uh, this just shows um, the evaluation that was going on at, um, at Calro Mutwapa. And um, um, even as they were evaluated, uh, they also showed that the cassava brown streak resistance uh, was sustained across seasons and at different locations. Now, these are some of the results we got when we evaluated this cassava, which is resistant both to cassava mosaic disease and cassava brown uh, streak disease. This was done between 2019 and 2020. And uh, there were various things that we looked at. We looked at uh, um, the harvest index. We looked at the marketable roots, the number of non-marketable roots. We were also interested in the, in the biomass. And we also calculated the harvest index for us to, to select the best performing lines uh, that, will, that will be advanced to the national performance trials after approval by the National Biosafety Authority and CAFIS. So the ones you see in the yellow are the ones which were uh, the best performing lines that we were able to select. Now we were able, we have also gone ahead and selected the possible uh, sites for national performance trials. And these are diff across different agroecological zones. And the sites uh, from Western, we have Alupe, uh, Kakamega, Kibos, Homa Bay, 
and Oyani. And these are sites which have high uh, population of white flies which transmit the virus and the high virus uh, disease incidence. In the coast, we have Mpekotoni, we have Msabaha, Mtuapa, Matuga, and Kikoneni. So from these, we are going to select three sites from Western and three sites from the coast to carry out our national performance trial. Now, um, I, we, we gave in uh, an application for environmental release and placing on the market to the National Performance uh, Authority last year in March. And we then got an approval for environmental release to, contact to conduct national performance trials and this approval was received on 21st June 2021, that is last month, and we were very, very excited about that. So what is the way forward? We have now gotten approval from the National, uh, um, national by Safety Authority to carry out our national performance trials, and we hope to do this um, uh, with the supervision of CAFIT. Uh, Kenya Plant Health Inspectorate Service, and this will be carried out for two seasons. And we are also going to carry out uh, DUS, which is distinct, which will look at the distinctiveness, uniformity, and stability of this cassava. Um, after the two seasons, um, the report and the data will be sent to the National Variety Release Co Committee. This committee actually comprises of kefis and uh, cassava breeders, and uh, they will then uh, recommend the release of the cassava, which is resistant cassava brown streak and cassava mosaic disease, um, to be released to the farmers and for general distribution. What I didn't say is that this cassava have no has no IP. We don't have to pay for IP, so it will be uh, it will be free to the small scale farmers, um, and it is only the uh, there are certain people who actually um, uh, sell cassava uh, uh, cuttings. They are the ones who will uh, sell the cassava. Otherwise, the cassava is free to the small scale uh, farmers. So we don't have any IP issues, and um, this. Uh, uh, cassava will form, follow the usual cassava distribution seed systems that we have already in Kenya. Thank you very much for listening.